As spring gave way to summer, in 1945, Vice Admiral Charles Lockwood, Commander Submarine Pacific Fleet, was preparing to execute one of World War II's most daring submarine operations. By May of 1945, American submarines had destroyed most of the Japanese supply lines from their conquered territories to the south, leaving them only one safe sanctuary, the Sea of Japan, with its supply lines from Manchuria and Korea. Lockwood's plan involved sending nine submarines deep into the sea to sever those lifelines. The biggest challenge was getting in. No U.S. submarines had attempted passage since the famed Wahoos presumed loss to mines in October 1943. The development of the new QLM, or Frequency Modulated Sonar, a pet project of Lockwood, provided the solution. The sonar's high frequency signals were nearly inaudible and able to pick up small objects at close distance. The results appeared as bright blobs on a screen, accompanied by chilling, bell-like gongs, which crews called Hell's Bells. One by one, throughout May 1945, the nine submarines, dubbed the Hellcats, arrived in Guam for their final outfitting and for training in the practice minefield set up offshore. Admiral Uncle Charlie Lockwood, already highly regarded by his men, rode every boat on their practice runs, building morale among the crews. On May 29th, the first wolf pack, designated the Hepcats, consisting of Sea Dog, Crevail, and Spadefish, sailed from Guam. Their bows pointed northwestward with a 1,600-mile transit to Shishima Strait, the southern entrance to the Sea of Japan. The next day, Tuni, Bonefish, and Skate, the Polecats, departed. Finally, on the third day, Bobcats, Flying Fish, Bofin, and Tenosa. On June 4th, the Hepcats arrived at the Strait. Estimating the mines to be in four long rows, moored at an average depth of 70 feet, the submarines went down below 120 feet, hoping to clear the fields, while maintaining a slight up bubble to allow keel-mounted transducers to better see the mines ahead. Slowly, with Hell's bells ringing, the Hellcats crept through the strait. A sailor on the Bofin recalled, we were going about two knots for almost 30 miles. It is not very fast. It's slower than you walk. It would be 20 long hours before the boats would clear the minefield. On June 5th, the Polecats arrived at the strait, ready to make the same journey. The Bobcats arrived the following day. One of their boats, Tenosa, having first made a slight diversion in route to pick up aviators from a downed B-29. When the airmen found out where they were headed, they were unanimous in their desire to be put back into the rubber lifeboats to take their chances on the open sea. Fortunately, they were transferred to a passing submarine returning to Guam. By nightfall on June 6th, all nine boats were in the Sea of Japan where orders were to hold fire until the 9th. What the Hellcats observed during the wait was the submariner's dream. Unescorted merchantmen, not zigzagging, with running lights burning. When the synchronized attacks began shortly after sunset on the 9th, the overconfident Japanese were astounded. So ghostlike was the sudden appearance of these nine American submarines in Japan's own backyard that Radio Tokyo announced that the submarines must have been smuggled in. The Hepcats and their assigned patrol waters off northwest Honshu were the first to score when shortly after sunset, Sea Dog fired a single torpedo at a 2,500-ton cargo ship which sank in 60 seconds. During the two-week patrol period, the Hepcats would sink an additional 13 ships and lay claim to having made the first invasion of the Japanese mainland. When Sea Dog, attempting to avoid attack, grounded itself on the coast of Honshu and had to back off the beach. The Bobcats, sent to the western waters off the east coast of Korea, frequently found themselves enmeshed by fog in hundreds of small fishing craft. 
but still managed to sink eight freighters and pick up several Japanese prisoners. The Polecats, assigned to the southeastern waters of the sea, led the Hellcats in tonnage sunk with five large cargo ships. Three of them when Skate entered a shallow cove to attack an anchored convoy. Skate later added a submarine to its tally. The Polecats were the only wolf pack to lose a boat when the destroyer sank Bonefish on June 18th, just after its successful attack on the 5,500-ton freighter Kunzin Maru. On the night of June 24th, the eight remaining Hellcats assembled off La Perouse Strait on the surface in a thick fog to begin their dash for the Pacific. Moving in parallel columns and communicating by voice radio, the Hellcats closed up and raced through the strait at 18 knots, with gun crews standing by should they be attacked in the narrow, heavily patrolled waters. With colors flying triumphantly, they entered Pearl Harbor on the 4th of July, 1945, to the enthusiastic greetings of base personnel manning the piers and windows to welcome them. The band was out in full force and Admiral Lockwood boarded each submarine as it came alongside. Lockwood awarded every Hellcat crew member a specially designed certificate, enrolling them as members of the Distinguished Order of Mighty Mind Dodgers for the successful navigation of what he called the most dangerous of war waters. Even Hollywood caught Lockwood's excitement and turned the mission into a movie. In the final count, the Hellcats took their subs into more than a dozen ports of Japan and Korea, sinking 27 Japanese merchantmen, one submarine, and 16 small craft, costing the Japanese a total of some 57,000 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the withering economy and war machine.